If you've been suffering through all this summer heat, imagine how your dried out lawn and garden feel. Master Gardener William Moss, though, here this morning to help us keep things green during these red hot days. Good morning, welcome back. Morning, morning. Nice to see you. Good, good to see and you. And we were well. joking around, you know, it's been so hot, everybody's lawn is so dry. Yeah. You could wait a little bit and maybe you'll get a shower like we just had. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but I think the sun's coming out again. It's going to be another scorcher. Right. So, uh, so we still got to think about ways to keep that lawn and garden going all season. So I would guess the, the easiest thing to do is to water it. That's, that's the easiest thing to do, but there are proper techniques to it. Right. You know, early we were showing the sprinkler running on here. You have to really soak things. You want to start out early in the morning. Why uh, early in the morning? Because that's when you have the least amount of evaporation from the okay. sun. So even so, if you want to do it late at night after the sun sets, not night, as good as morning. Not as good as morning. Morning is good because it gets to soak in really good, and okay. also you won't have any diseases coming because the leaves are wet. Okay. So soak really good. Even, even like the lawn, you want to get out there and water about 30 to 40 minutes every two to three days. Wow. Not every day. Right. Not every day. So don't go out there 15 minutes for every day. Go out there 30, 40 Follow minutes. Follow the instructions. 30, yes. 40 minutes every 30, 40 day. minutes every two to three days. Every two to three really days. Soak. See how really soak. And you it. recommend using this, this soaker attachment as opposed to say a sprinkler you or. Can, you can use the sprinkler, but when I'm watering my, my garden or, or containers really and I want to know it's really soaked, okay. I like to use this because I want it to really soak through. You want it to come out of the containers. Containers are a special case. You may have to water them every day. So you want to water so that you see, see it, it start to right come, now. Right, out. come out the bottom. Okay. Really soak those really well. Get them watered thoroughly. So we need lots of water for our plants, though. Right. Mulch is also mulch. really important, right? Right, right. We'll, we'll go over here and I'll show you how, show you that. You want to definitely keep mulch because mulch is your friend during the wintertime and the summertime. Because it keeps that moisture in. It helps keep the moisture. It's like a blanket over the top, mm -hmm. keeping the moisture from being evaporated out. So I always say, you know, especially during these hot times, use a good, rich, organic compost as a mulch because it does double duty. It not only mulches, but it also feeds the soil and feeds the plants. From that compost, you mean? Yep. It feeds it. Yep. And how much mulch do I need? Two inches. So, okay. So, but, but there's a trick to it. When you get to the base of the plant, I want you to kind of make it shallow like a bowl there. So that way when you water, it captures it. It's like a it's water a, basin. Gotcha. So it'll capture more water for it. And this really keeps the plants growing well. So that's one thing you want to do is mulch at least two inches. Okay, and make a bowl. And make a little about bowl about fertilizer? it. fertilizer? Is that going to help you more in the summer? Not now. Okay. You know, during a heat wave, you don't want to fertilize. Because if you fertilize during a heat wave, you require the plant to use more water. Right. So more fertilizer means more water. And you just get caught up in that vicious cycle. Gotcha. And if it's dry and hot, it's not a good thing. So cut back on the fertilizer during these times. Any weeds, we don't have any here, but weeds, get those guys out because weeds take water away oh, from, away the, from plants. the grass and the plants. Right. And makes sense. I hadn't thought of it, but makes sense. Right. And there's also plant strengthening sprays. You have to look at This one is called jazz spray. You actually take it and you spray it on your plants. What's and, in this? And what this does, it's just a, it's a bunch of natural ingredients, uh -huh. a bunch of enzymes that actually help the plant deal with drought better. So for those of you who have like prize roses or prize plants, look for plant strengthening sprays as well. They'll help them out. Plant strengthening, very good. And if you know in general though, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of heat. Yeah. You brought some some sort of heat friendly plants and grass for us this morning. Yes, we brought some incredible plants that, could, that love the summer heat, that love the drought and can really take it. One of them I wanna start with is buffalo grass. Now, more people should grow this because it doesn't require, requires a third of the water wow. of a regular turf. And especially a when you think of so many areas, hot areas with droughts. Hot areas with droughts and water restrictions, you know, you got a choice. Let your lawn go brown completely during the summer, or you can replace it with something like this native buffalo grass, and it'll do very well for you and take a lot and less And this, this will work in pretty much any climate? It works better if you get further west, but it's okay. also pretty good along the south and right. some parts of the east. So, so buffalo grass is buffalo one good grass one. Is great. And we got just a, a ton of plants here. We'll start with the herbs up front. Everyone knows you can put your herbs out. They love it hot and dry, yep. the thyme, the sage, the rosemary. We got a bunch of native prairie plants over here as well. You know, things like cone flowers. These guys are from the hot prairies. So they're nice. used to taking it and they'll go and go and go and bring plenty of butterflies and stuff in as well. And then finally, they're just a bunch of plants that have been made for drought tolerance. Such as? It's a ton of things. This is called a Verbena, it's actually called Superbena. Superbena? Superbena, and it just goes. It loves the, it loves the, the hot, dry weather. And this I saw a lot of yes. in, when I lived in Georgia. I feel like this was everywhere. <laughs> it was. This is not that particular one, but this is this is a native grass. This is an okay. ornamental grass. They take heat and drought well, too. So you can have beautiful color and texture all throughout the garden. No reason to let the heat get the best of your no, garden or your lawn. Absolutely not. Some great tips, as always. Thanks. Such a pleasure to have you back with us. Thanks, Thanks. sir. Thank we'll you. see you again soon. <laughs>